Hi, I'm Hannah Wilkes, host of Overtime on Sky Sports NFL, and this is the Cleats Off podcast with Liz Handari. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Cleats Off podcast. I'm your host, Liz Bandari, and this is a show that brings you closer to the game you love. Today's guest is Hannah Wilkes, presenter of Overtime on Sky Sports NFL, which you can catch at 9pm every Tuesday. Hannah is both a sports presenter and a reporter with a strong background in journalism and sports broadcasting. She works for Sky Sports and Talk Sport, and not only is she a regular on our screens talking about the game, but she's fallen for the sport in the same way that we all have. Enjoy the show! Welcome to the show, Hannah. How are you? I'm very well, thank you, Liz. Thanks so much for having me on. How are you doing? Yeah, no, I'm really good and I'm super excited to have you on. We've been chatting on, I guess, social media for so long, so it's nice to finally, finally talk. (laughs) It is, isn't it? That's one of the amazing things that I kind of love about NFL fans in the UK is that we're all friends on social media and then when you actually have a proper conversation, it's like, I feel like I've known you for years even though we've never (laughs) properly spoken. I know, I know what you mean. I think that's what I love about the NFL community. Like, everyone is just so, just so nice and down to earth and chatty and yeah it just makes you feel so welcome right absolutely absolutely <laughs> now I've as you do I have, I have a nosy at, at people's lives and and look at the CVs and all these kind of things and you've got one that I think is really cool now you're a presenter um at the London 2012 games you've presented mm. for talk sport you've been at Sky for over 10 years and in so many different kind of roles like what was it that made you want to I guess pursue a career in sports journalism you just reminded me about the Olympics. I <laughs> get that I work for the Olympics. Um, it's madness. Um, so sports journalism. So I, when I went to uni, when I was sort of like, you know, having to pick your life choices at 18, um, I knew I wanted to work in the media, um, but I didn't know what that looked like for me. I was still very much like open to anything, everything. Um, and then when I got to university, um, I went to Loughborough, which is obviously a very sporty place. Yeah. Um, and I started doing student TV there because Loughborough are really fortunate in that they have this incredible student TV setup where you can pretty much anything. They've got edit suites, they've got the capacity to do live coverage. I mean, and I'm talking like 10 odd years ago now, so I'm sure what they can do by now is like <laughs> way beyond this. Um, but yeah, so I just got involved with that because it looked like fun. Um, and yeah, filming sport around campus because there was plenty going on there. Um, so I was like, right, TV is for me and I've always loved my sport. Um, so the fact that I could combine this new passion of mine, TV, um, <laughs> with something I'm quite good at, which is talking and being quite nosy about people's lives um, and combine it with sport. It was, yeah, it was kind of, I just fell in love with it at uni and when she discovers something that you enjoy and that yeah. you can, if you're fortunate, turn into a career, um, that was it really. I just, <laughs> yeah, love sport, love making telly. So it's a fusion of the two. <laughs> and then where did your passion for like, I guess, sport come, th- come from? And I guess when it comes to like your list of favourite sports. Where does NFL sit in that? Love from, for sport. My love for sport definitely comes from my mum. Um, she is a huge sports fan so she's a big rugby fan I mean she's unbearable to watch rugby with actually (laughs) and the fact that the fact that her and my dad are still married after 30 odd years of watching rugby together is is one of life's great (laughs) miracles Um, but yeah so she's really into all sports so rugby Wimbledon's on we watch Wimbledon every year Um, she's a huge sports fan dad's really into his Formula One as well so we grew up watching a lot of sport in the house Um, NFL is something that I came to you relatively late you know I'd never really watched it until I started working at Sky um and I, I was running on a couple I think I did a couple of Thursday night footballs when Sky used to do a live studio like over on a Thursday and I was like what is going on here I don't really get what's going on but these people are hitting each other hard which I like um and then the Wembley game for that year at this point there was only one Wembley game every year um, and it was the Bucks against the Bears. And I was a runner at this point. So basically making tea, photocopying, walking people from A to B. Um, I was put on to run at this uh, Bucks-Bears game at Wembley. 
um, and Fox were over doing a host broadcast for the US uh, and they needed runners. So a couple of us got loaned out to Fox and I got loaned out to Fox um, and they sent me up to the gantry where they were having their studio and their commentators. Um, <laughs> and Daryl Johnston was like, do you know NFL? Do you know much about it? And I was like, I mean, <laughs> I like the physicality of it, but it's, it's a fairly new sport to me. So I got a lesson in it from, from him. Um, awesome. And then I was hooked. Because <laughs> if you're going to have someone introduce you to NFL, you want it to be, you know, a legendary Dallas Cowboys Super Bowl winner. Uh, so yeah, and it's just, it's just been like one of those sports that over the last 10 years or so, I have just watched more and more and seen more, more about it. Um, and then I've had opportunities to work on it as well. And now it basically rules my life. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. You've got a team that you follow now? Yes, I'm a Rams fan, um, <laughs> which is a weird one because I, when I started getting more and more into it, in fact, from the first like day I started watching it, I was like, right, I need a team. A strange one, isn't it? I think, I think it's interesting talking to a lot of UK or just European fans generally as to how people pick the team they support because it's completely illogical really, isn't it? Like you might, <laughs> they might have been the first team you saw play in this country or they might wear the same colours that the football team you support wear. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so I, tr- I tried on a few different teams for size, I won't lie. I thought initially that maybe I'd be a Patriots fan, but that did feel a bit too much like glory hunting. Um, Deckard was out in um, Pittsburgh and is a huge Steelers fan. I was like, no, not allowed, not okay. <laughs> um, so I was like, okay, wait, wait, let's put back in. So they're like my second team. Yeah, and the Rams, it was sort of around the time that they sort of got Jared Goff in the first round of the draft yeah. and there was like hard knock or was all or nothing all those sort of things just like they feel exciting um they're moving from one place they need they need <laughs> they need fans um and yeah and do you know what I've seen them play more than any other so it actually feels like a, a pretty valid fit at this point because I've seen a fair few of their games <laughs> in the flesh at this point yeah um, definitely but, and, they yeah, are an exciting and I like team. the blue and yellow and the blue and gold <laughs> yeah. they are an exciting team oh, I feel like this scene is slightly overlooked and I hope that that will, that will work in our favour a little bit. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Uh, as long as we play better than we did against the Giants, because my goodness, it doesn't matter how much you love and support a team, but there are some games you just can't stay awake for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel that pain. <laughs> now, what's your favourite thing about working in a studio with the likes of like Neil, Jeff, Sean, Will, Rob, and you know, the many other amazing like guest hosts have had? I mean, it's just a dream, really. It's It's incredible. They are... Everyone that goes into that NFL studio, everyone is so excited because they're getting to talk about the sport they love for a living. Um, they're getting to watch football and talk about football. And it's just like hanging out with your mates. And they're all so welcoming, so friendly, so knowledgeable. Like, you know, they just, they just want everyone to know as much and love the game as much as they do. Um, so, I mean, just the knowledge amongst them is incredible. Like, every time I spend any time with Rob Ryan, I learned something new, even if it's just a little bit of gossip. Um, <laughs> um, and yeah, I mean, Neil, there is nothing about the NFL that man does not know. Um, and what he's done for the sport in this country is just incredible. Um, so yeah, it's a complete joy and a privilege to get to watch football and talk about it with them. Um, yeah, it's it's brilliant. They're a great bunch. <laughs> they really are. It's just so much fun. And the, the downside of this year is obviously no one's really seeing each other much. Yeah. And the usual seasons, like this time last year, everyone would be on a Wednesday because that's before like, when they did inside the huddle and have like the yeah. production meeting for the week. So you just see each other a lot more. Whereas now, obviously, everyone is having to do everything separately until they go yeah. in on a Sunday, they go in on a Tuesday. Like it's it's very remote. So that's. I mean, I know it's happening across the board. Um, and it's not a unique <laughs> situation, but it's yeah, that's the the downside this year is kind of missing everyone. But yeah. we'll see. Hopefully, later in the season, we might be able to all be together a bit more. We'll see. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully. Um, now having females on like NFL shows is something in America that's totally normal, and and they've always been really good at. But in the UK, it's something that's still you know pretty new. And we had Dara's host a couple of years ago for you know for Neil was in his role, and and now you're part of the team as well. Have you received much like I guess criticism or hate via social media? Um, well, what I will say is, in the US, they've got loads of women involved now. But don't yeah. forget, you know, thirty odd years ago, it was a very different story. So they're ahead of where we are. Um, but it, that wasn't always the case. They're just yeah. sort of ahead of the curve there. And so there were some real trailblazing women to, to make that a possibility. Um, so yes and no. I mean, generally, I'd say most NFL fans in this country are always, always really supportive. And especially with the new show over time, we've been getting so many messages from people saying how much they enjoy it. 
um, and like what we're doing with it. And it's, and it's really encouraging to see. Um, and you do get a bit of criticism. It's, it's the nature of the job and it's not reserved just for women. Um, obviously there's different kind of language that gets used for women. Yeah. Um, I have to say generally I'm quite fortunate in that I don't get much of it, especially compared to other co female colleagues of mine in yeah. sports broadcasting. Um, some of what they get sent is completely unacceptable. Um, so I'm fortunate in that it's not very often, but when it happens, of course it, it hurts. Yeah. Um, there's always a like token woman jive and I've said it before and I'll say it again. There is no such thing as a token woman on television, like, <laughs> especially in sport. Like they're there because they know their stuff and they've worked yeah. really hard and they know what they're doing and they know what they're talking about. Um, so yeah, it, you, you get it. I'm quite fortunate. I don't get too much of it. I don't know how some people cope with the stuff they do get because some of it is so malicious. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it happens to everyone. I mean, it's definitely not just a female thing either. Like it's across the board and it's, um, yeah, yeah. it's not, it's not nice. And it's, it's horrible to see about your colleagues as well when you do see other people get exposed. Um, but yeah, generally I'm quite fortunate. I do think that most, most interactions I have on Twitter with fans are and um, the sport and viewers are mostly positive now to those who are new to the show get to tune in what is it about so we have highlights we have discussion and we kind of bring you all the things you might have missed it's sort of social media reaction things that have happened off field um we talk a bit of fantasy football in there it's just a slightly like it's slightly light-hearted um and then a fun look back at that week's nfl action really um so yeah it's, it's great fun so it's myself josh denzel and at the moment rob ryan um i noticed some <laughs> themes already rob is always really violent and mine is usually just someone doing something impressive for a touchdown because i just sort of like love the glory and josh will kind of, kind of flip flop between the two but he likes to give something quite athletic and we look around so she gives us her sort of fantasy tips for the week um so yeah it's a really fun hour show on a tuesday <laughs> Now, this is a show that you planned throughout lockdown via Zoom without any rehearsals. So what was that like? It was really challenging. So I've worked at Sky, like you've mentioned, for, for a long time. And whenever you have a new show, um, you usually have rehearsal time, you have a lot of production meetings, all the rest of it. Obviously, that was not possible. Um, so we had Zoom meetings. Um, and, then, and then it was it was we were doing it. <laughs> So I think the first show I know it was, I think everyone was really nervous because it was a new show, totally new style to anything we've done before um, as well. And obviously you want to hit the ground running with it and have the right energy and rapport, but have had no real opportunity to develop that. Um, so yeah, it turned out fine. I think everyone was quite relieved after the first one. We're like, okay, that worked. That was what, that was how we wanted it to be. Good start kind of thing. It, it made it much more nerve stressful in the build up and launching a new show is always stressful. So kind of going like, me and Josh are hosting the show together and we've literally spoken on Zoom and that is it. Like, that's really challenging because you want to be having yeah. that rapport. But no, it's, it's, it worked. Now, throughout your career, um, has there been like a particular person who helped mentor you or that, you know, has given you, I guess, the best piece of advice you've received? Oh, that's a really tough question. I've been really fortunate, I think, in that although people think of sport and sports broadcasting as a very male dominated industry which you know it still is I've always been really kind of lucky in that I've worked with a lot of women throughout my career both on and off camera I've been surrounded by really brilliant female role models and people that have really supported me and sort of invested their time in me so it's very hard to sort of pick one because there were a lot of people that that have helped me and given me really good advice um yeah, and that's whether it's behind the scenes or on camera. So that's very hard to pin down. Um, I think one of the first bits of advice I was given when I sort of started out was l like learn to how you know what goes on behind the scenes, become a good producer, because that then makes you better on camera because you know what the, what the producer needs, what the director needs, and vice versa. When you then are producing and you have to start producing occasionally, you, you, know, you know the two-way flow of it. So I think that is probably kind of, the guiding principle, especially the early years of my career, that I really kept in mind. Um, and so I did a lot of work in production before sort of stepping in front of the camera and understanding everything that goes on behind it really helps. Um, so there's, there's that. And other than that, the one, the one mantra that pops into my head repeatedly, so for the years I worked on Game Changers, which was our kids' sports show. And for the first three years, it was presented by 
uh, Olympic gold medalist Darren Campbell and Di Doty. And Darren's mantra, which he used to say a lot, and I kind of was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And actually, I realised recently, I do it obsessively. He was like, failure to prepare is preparing to fail. Yeah. And I, I, I am such a prepper for everything I do. Like, I mean, even today, I was like, what are the questions? Just, just want to know, make sure you've got ideas in your head where you're going to want to go with these, with these answers. Um, and I think that's with everything. I work on quite a few different sports. So obviously, this time of year, NFL is my main focus, but I do work on others. And I'm militant about making sure I have my prep time because you need to know what you're talking about. You need to be prepared. You need to know the history, the ins and outs, who's who. Um, and I think that's, that's one of the things. People can not like my style of presenting. They can find me annoying. They can find my voice whiny. <laughs> but I am always stood there knowing that I've done my homework so that I know what's, what I'm talking about. Um, and that for me is sort of, it's kind of come from, come from Darren in that mantra, but also just generally. I mean, I've worked with a lot of people that you see how hard people work and how much they prep. So yeah. yeah, I wouldn't say I've had like a mentor, but I've had I've had a lot. I mean, I'd start naming names, and then I feel like I'd miss someone, <laughs> so I'm not going to do that. Yeah, um, but yeah, I've been surrounded by really fantastic women who wanted to help other women within sports broadcasting. Um, yeah, and and great men too. <laughs> <laughs> and in terms of where you are in your career, what is the dream role for you, or, or are you already living it? So this is a really hard question to answer <laughs> because. The thing with working in television and broadcasting generally is it's, it's very uncertain, nothing's guaranteed, and you never really know where the next opportunity is going to come from or what it's going to look like. So about three, four years ago, I started presenting Game Changers, our kids show. And someone asked me this question, and I was like, I'm living it. I'm presenting this kids sports show. It's all sports. It's every sport. It's, it's you know, to make, to inspire kids to get active. Like, um, this is my job. This, like, this is brilliant um I was living my own dream and then last night and I was reporting on that for the full 10 days you know sideline the rest of it that was a dream I never saw coming because it was the scale of the broadcast wasn't something I thought would ever do um and now I'm hosting a weekly show on Sky Sports NFL where I talk about football for an hour um, <laughs> and just get to have fun and it's literally pinched me so yeah I'm very lucky I always say and, and I've said this so many times with different experiences. If this is the last thing I do in my career, then I'll be very happy. Um, <laughs> and that's probably not the case, let's be honest. <laughs> huh. um, no, I. It, it, this feels very much like a dream come true. And it's, it's just pushing it further. I mean, you know, being in the studio on Thanksgiving for the playoffs was, to begin with, I was like, I, I, I die. This is, this is incredible. <laughs> and it still is. Um, it's such a buzz. And it's, it's weird. It's one of those you just you just don't really realise it, do you? Because you're doing work, and you know all the sort of steps forward. There are always steps back as well, and frustration. So then you take a step back. You are actually look at where you are now, because um, it does take a lot of hard work. It yeah. doesn't happen immediately. Um, so yeah. So I'm very lucky to be doing what I'm doing now. I'm very fortunate to be doing it. So yeah, long may it continue. And you, <laughs> you just never know. Like I say, you just never know in this yeah. industry what's going to happen next. So. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and do you think you'd ever be interested in making a switch to, I guess, to the states and covering the NFL there? Oh my gosh! Yeah, I mean, if <laughs> if they wanted a British person to talk to a wholly American <laughs> audience about their major sport, I would would be very willing. I mean, my my dream is that they'll get we'll have a London a UK based franchise and get to cover them maybe that would be cool yeah <laughs> um obviously that would be an incredible thing to do um that feels beyond the realm of possibility going over stateside for it but <laughs> never say never I mean talk about <laughs> aiming high um yeah wouldn't rule it out if I got the opportunity but I, it that feels that feels <laughs> almost impossible I have to say <laughs> they've got so many brilliant broadcasters over yeah. there as well that the competition is out of this world <laughs> not that it's not here but you know yeah. they've got that enti- they've got that massive country as well it's, a, it's an even bigger pool of talent yeah and that's it there's some amazing women in the NFL in in these careers be it like reporting or the high up in HQ at a team or that you know they're a scout or they're a coach is there any woman that's in the NFL at the moment well past or present actually um that you pinpoint as finding the most inspiring Oh, that's a really tough one. I I have to say I'm in awe of just 
almost idolise so many of the female broadcasters they've got over there that just do a phenomenal job. I mean, Pam Oliver is a living legend. Erin Andrews is fantastic at what she does. Um, Kate Adam, the hardest work in broadcasting. She's everywhere um, and so knowledgeable. Um, but then, you know, sort of away from the broadcasting sphere as well. I mean, we, we talked about this before we started recording. Jen Welter, Dr. Jen Welter, has got this incredible story and I've and been listening to her audio but recently having sort of been very familiar with her trajectory but actually sort of hearing it in her words um she just broke down so many barriers and her sort of attitude all the way through it's and it kind of would be you asking if I'm sort of what's the dream living the dream it's like I don't really know because there isn't there isn't a path in broadcasting yeah. everyone's careers look so different that there's not there's no set path to get here, there or everywhere. And it's really interesting talking to her about that because or listening to her talk about that because all the things she did, like playing running back for a men's team, coaching that men's team, coaching in the NFL, there was no blueprint, there was no path. And I think that sort of trusting your gut and trusting yourself and staying authentic to yourself, I think what she's achieved is is phenomenal and it's um yeah it's incredibly inspiring and she's paved the way for so many women I mean just the other week we had three women on all sides of the football pitch didn't we with the Browns yeah, yeah, yeah. um Sarah Thomas was refereeing and the Washington forgive me I forget the Jennifer name Washington King. um there you go yeah yeah um she was the the coaching so she had three women and it it felt yeah. very normal obviously it was amazing and we celebrated it as we should but it was there's still there's no questions anymore of whether it's acceptable yeah. or whether it should be happening. Yeah. It's more of a case of let's just make it happen, which is yeah. which is down to Dr. Jen Welter. So I think she's yeah she's incredible. Yeah, she is. She's absolutely amazing. And and, and speaking to her last week about that exact moment, she she had actually had a text message from uh, from Sarah Thomas saying it feels like you should be here, coach. So I thought that was that was really really nice. And um, yeah, she's amazing amazing person to to learn from definitely. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> well, listen, I just Hannah, wish I could play. <laughs> oh, oh my! I went to an NFL UK live event a couple of years ago. It was actually it was uh, how many years ago? It must have been probably six years ago or something. Anyway, Neil and Jeff were there, and um, Jeff basically showed me how to throw a ball. It, it was quite good. I've never thrown since, but I feel like I'd you know be ready to go. He really gets you to get your elbow up. <laughs> yeah, he really. Yeah. Gets, it's quite an unnatural movement, isn't it? When they actually if, break yeah. it down for you. <laughs> Yeah, I've had, <laughs> I've had the, I've had that same session. Yeah, and that's it. And you look at these plays; it just I seems think natural. I, I think I'm better at the other end of it. <laughs> I'm just better yeah. not on the field. It's at all. funny, it's, and it's it. But you know, it's so fascinating. So, a friend of mine was. Um, this is a bit off topic, I admit. But a friend of mine um, got married a couple of years ago. And one of their wedding guests was a a friend. There's an American guy, and he played college football. I forget where, but he was like high school star quarterback. Played college football. Um, didn't make it into the to the NFL but was like the guy and the day before the wedding we were sort of all chucking a ball around you got the Brits kind of throwing it rugby <laughs> style and then him throwing this ball and everyone like especially the guys and then also me as well were just watching him throw it <laughs> and just the whole movement and it's just it's just fascinating it's that like he couldn't throw it rugby style for love nor money yeah. but these guys just watching him throw it it's um <laughs> yeah it's something that I think needs to be ingrained in you from from an early age yeah definitely and that's it it goes such a different length like the rugby throw it doesn't really feel like it goes that far but the American football like the way they can throw that is just no. crazy the strength behind the ball <laughs> my favorite thing to watch is just yeah my favorite thing to watch in football I think I, I mean not my possibly just just big deep passes like russell wilson's rainbow throws i can watch it like art <laughs> it's magical <laughs> i love russell he's amazing <laughs> well hannah it's been absolutely amazing to speak to you and, and i hope that you realize that like being on the screen in the position you're in i hope you realize that like you know inspires women to aim for that as well so yeah i hope you realize that <laughs> Wow, that's a, that's um, that's very humbling and quite um, incredible to hear. Because yeah, I just just <laughs> I'm doing my job and having fun. And, <laughs> and so that, yeah, when you take a step back and think like that, that's, um, that's incredible to hear. So thank you. Yeah, no good. Well, thanks so much for coming on. It's been great to speak to you. Thanks for having me. I'm so <laughs> excited. <laughs> Well, that's it for another episode of the Cleats Off podcast. As always, I'd love your comments and feedback. 
so feel free to reach out to me at NFL Girl UK across Twitter, Facebook or Instagram. And finally, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast. I wouldn't want you to miss a single episode. Until next time, thanks for listening.